Um, he can go and cower in a corner or he can show up and uh, be lit on fire. Either way, I'm good. Welcome to Street Politics. My name is Reese Waters. Don't forget to like the video and subscribe to the page. For now, it looks like we're actually going to get a debate between Vice President Kamala Harris and Donald Trump. But do you think he's actually going to show up? Do you think Donald Trump shows up uh, September 10th? Uh, no, but if he does show up, he is about to get his butt handed to him. So I'm here for it either way. Um, he can go and cower in a corner or he can show up and uh, be lit on fire. Either way, I'm good. I would tend to agree. I mean, we've all seen how Kamala handles her business in interrogation. Uh, Attorney General Barr, has the president or anyone at the White House ever asked or suggested that you open an investigation of anyone? Um, I wouldn't, I wouldn't, uh... Yes or no? Could you, could you repeat that question? I will repeat it. Yeah. Has the president or anyone at the White House ever asked or suggested that you open an investigation of anyone? Yes or no, please, sir. Um, the president or anybody else? Seems you'd remember something like that and be able to tell us. Yeah, but I'm, I'm trying to grapple with the word suggest. I mean, uh, there have been discussions of, of matters out there that uh, they have not asked me to open an investigation. But Perhaps they've suggested? I don't know. I wouldn't say suggest. Hinted? I, I don't know. Inferred? You don't know. Okay. Um, in your March 24th summary, you wrote that, quote, after reviewing the special counsel's final report. But I will say that no one. Sir, I'm, not, I'm asking a question. Did you personally review all of the underlying evidence? Uh, no, we took an accept did, 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 we accepted. Did accepted Mr. The Rosenstein? No, we accepted the statements in the report as the factual record. We did not go underneath it to see whether or not they were accurate. We accepted it as accurate and made our. So made you our accepted decision. the report as the evidence? Yes. You did not question or look at the underlying evidence that supports the conclusions in the report? No. As the Attorney General of the United States, you run the United States Department of Justice. If in any U.S. Attorney's office around the country, the head of that office, when being asked to make a critical decision about, in this case, the person who holds the highest office in the land, mm -hmm. and whether or not that person committed a crime, would you accept them recommending a charging decision to you if they had not reviewed the evidence? Well, that's a question for Bob Mueller. He's the U.S. attorney. He's the one who presents the report. But it was you who made the charging decision, sir. What, what, what? You made the decision not to charge the president. No, in a Pross memo and in a declination memo. You said it was your baby. What did you mean by that? Man, Bill Barr ain't never been the same. Wow, former AG Bill Barr, who let a lot of great people down by not investigating voter fraud in our country, has just endorsed me for president despite the fact that I call him, called him weak, slow-moving, lethargic, gutless, and lazy. Based on the fact that I greatly appreciate his wholehearted endorsement, I am removing the word lethargic from my statement, thank you, Bill. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's classic Trump. <laughs> In fact, I made a whole video about it, naming him the saddest man in America. But Alyssa Farrah Griffin, who was Trump's communications director, posted yesterday and said that you were present at a moment when Trump suggested executing the person who leaked information that he went to the White House bunker when those George Floyd protests were happening outside the White House. Do you remember that? I remember him being very mad about that. I actually don't remember him saying executing, but I, you know, I, I wouldn't dispute it. You know, I mean, it doesn't sound. I mean, it, it, the president would lose his temper and say things like that. I, I doubt he would have actually carried it out. I don't. You doubt he would actually carried it out? You mean you're not sure? You're not sure? You doubt he would actually carry it out? Oh, you know, I thought he was playing when he said that, but then, but then I never saw Terry again. I got that one wrong. Yeah, yeah, I, I got that one wrong. And we've also seen how Trump handles being interrogated.
having met Ms. Carroll, you have since seen a photograph that shows you with Ms. Carroll on a receiving line. Correct? Along with a lot of other Objection people. Here in front of you, a black and white photograph that we've marked as DJT23. And I'm going to ask you, is this the photo that you were just referring to? I think so, yes. Okay. And do you recall when you first saw this photo? At some point during the process, I saw it. That's, uh, I guess, her husband, John Johnson, who was an anchor for ABC. Nice guy, I thought. I mean, I don't know him, but I thought he was pretty good at what he did. Um, I don't even know who the woman, let's see, I don't know who, th it's Marla. You're saying Marla's in this photo? That's Marla, yeah, that's, that's my wife. Which wo woman are you pointing to? No. That's Here. Carol. Oh, is that, the oh, person okay. you just pointed to was oh, Eugene Carroll. Who is that? Who is this? Point, your wife. And the person, the woman on the right is your then wife, I don't Ivana? know. This was the picture. Ivana. I assume that's John Johnson. Is that that's Carol? Because Carol? it's very blurry. If I was Trump, I would use this footage in divorce proceedings. Like, I, 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 I would use this in any of my cases with my ex-wives. Your Honor, I cannot distinguish one person from another. And no, it is, it is not my fault that you caught us walking off that plane. I thought it was my wife. And apparently it hasn't gotten any better. You remember him confusing Kamala Harris with Melania, right? And I want you to listen to this. I saw a picture of her yeah, yeah. on Time Magazine today. She looks like the most beautiful actress ever to live. I, it was a drawing. And uh, actually, yeah, yeah. she looked very much like our great first lady, Melania. She looked... She looked, didn't look. Yeah. She didn't look like Camilla. That's right. But of course, she's a beautiful woman. So we'll leave it at that, right? Okay, that's another pronunciation of her name, C Camilla. Uh, guys, what? Like, <laughs> what? Now, if we think this all the way through, are we about to get a flashback to the Trumps behind closed doors? He is unmistakably tied to Project Twenty Twenty Five. Twenty Twenty Five. How, how, you, how you know my phone lock code, huh? Why are you always going through my phone? What happened to trust in the relationship? The Harris campaign has appropriately taken the offensive on Donald Trump's half-stepping. But because they already know everything. They say, oh, Trump's, you know, not doing the debate. That's the same thing they say now. I mean, right now I say, why should I do a debate? I'm leading in the polls. And everybody knows her. Everybody knows me. But when I looked at the hostility of that, I said, why am I doing it? Let's do it with another network. Now, one thing she will need to do is to balance the toughness that she has evoked to try and diminish the sexism that comes with running for office as a woman and balance that with the compassion that she has shown given all of the many people in her life that have come out and spoken about it, which makes Jasmine Crockett actually a very unique person to speak to both of those qualities. A, because she has a personal relationship with Kamala Harris, but B, because she's also somebody that has shown incredible toughness. Thank you so much for that. Because honestly, if they would continue to say if or Hunter and we were playing a drinking game, I would be drunk by now. Because I promise you, they have not talked about the subject of this, which would be the president. But let me tell you something that was so disturbing as I walked in to this chamber today. As I prepared, I said, what is the crime? Because when you're talking about impeachment, you're talking about high crimes or misdemeanors. And I, I can't seem to find the crime, and honestly, no one has testified of what crime they believe the President of the United States has committed. But when we start talking about things that look like evidence, they want to act like they're blind. They don't know what this is. These are our national secrets, looks like in the shitter to me. But also revealed her compassion at the DNC, which by the way, was something that I reacted to. In fact, I called it jarring, which although it was, is something that I actually need to speak a little bit more to because we need to give people the freedom to be three-dimensional. Yes, the person who's out here giving B6 the business is also the person that has the compassion to do right by the people in her jurisdiction. And in fact, beyond her jurisdiction, she spoke to that directly. 
When I first got to Congress, I wasn't sure I made the right decision. As I approached Vice President Harris for our official photo, she turned to me and asked, what's wrong? I immediately began crying. The most powerful woman in the world wiped my tears and listened. Let's bring in Democratic Congresswoman Jasmine Crockett of Texas. Claire and Mara are also back with us. Congresswoman, good to see you. That moment from your speech where you talked about the authenticity and the humanity of Kamala Harris. You said she's the only candidate in this race capable of empathy. How do you help voters understand something that Doug Emhoff said in his speech, which is her empathy is her strength? Yeah, um, I think that I am kind of um, the outward expression of that, right? Um, because she doesn't just use it to guide her when it comes to the legislative results that she's seeking. She also uses it to empower others. I truly was like a fish out of water when I first got to Congress, and I really had more questions than answers. And, uh, you know, when people talk to me about that speech, they're like, we saw a side of you that we've never seen. Um, most people had not seen that side of me. And it was the side of me that actually had questions and was doubtful. But I can tell you uh, without any question or any uncertainty that she has had that type of empathetic leadership that has empowered so many other leaders um, beyond just myself. I would also add as black women, I for one need to be a little bit more mindful of the ways in which we discuss them because we all know of that angry black woman trope which completely obscures the massive well of compassion that is needed to be a black woman in today's society without making you wanna holler. Now for me, anytime we can get Donald Trump talking, quite frankly, is a good thing, which tells you everything you need to know about the man the GOP has chosen to stand behind. Congresswoman veteran political reporter Jonathan Martin this week said of your GOP colleagues on the Hill, quote, let's be brutally honest. If you took a survey of the Republican conference on Capitol Hill and said, would you prefer Trump to play golf for the rest of the campaign and let his campaign drive the message or have Donald Trump do events? We all know which they'd prefer. Is he right? <laughs> Absolutely. Let him go play golf. <laughs> Every time he opens his mouth, um, you know, the truth comes out and the truth is not a pretty thing. The truth is tied to the agenda of Project 2025. The truth is tied to his history as it relates to um, discriminate, discriminating against people of color when it came to housing or when it came down to um, how he wanted the Central Park Five hung. Um, the truth only hurts him. So, yeah, they want him to shut up. Um, and allow them to kind of continue on so that they can continue to deceive people into believing that these two candidates both have something uh, wonderful to offer this country. When we know that there's only one candidate that is qualified and only one candidate that is interested in moving our country forward instead of moving us back to the Jim Crow era um, of the 1950s and 60s. Just imagine that one of our major political parties has elected to back a man that is a liability every time he opens his mouth. In fact, the only reason why they might even show up to the debate is because they got nothing to lose because it's a hole in that bucket of campaign support. Also, shout out to Jasmine Crockett, who always gets it right for that Shirley Chisholm picture behind her, repping the first African-American woman in Congress in 1968, and the first woman and African-American to seek the nomination for president from one of our two major political parties. Now, I'm gonna get back to the question that I opened with. Do y'all think Trump actually shows up? I, 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 can I can tell you this, I don't blame Donald Trump for not wanting to debate Kamala. I've been married to a black woman for 40 years and I ain't won one debate. I'm owing 93,000. I won't believe it till I see it. I won't believe it until the first question is asked of Donald Trump. I won't believe it till the first commercial break. I won't believe it until the closing credits. I won't believe it until the 10 minute fact check that CNN runs on Trump three hours after the debate is over. Getting Trump talking might be the only thing that can set our mentally trapped brothers and sisters free.
I just got off the phone with my boy Quan. He said he voted for Trump because Trump gave him that $1,200 stimulus check. I looked it up. It was four years ago. That's 1,600 days. $1,200. That's 75 cents a day for just, for just 75 cents a day. Trump bought your vote. <laughs> Tried to tell him it wasn't even Trump that gave us the checks. It was it was the Democrats in Congress. Trump fought it the whole way. He hung up the phone. Called me back. He said, if you trying to convince me not to vote for Trump, it didn't work. You know what else don't work? You. You still on that 75 cent a day. Black man, I want you to be released from the hold that that 75 cents has. Speak with me, hold my hand. You didn't even get the whole 1,200. You got 600 of that. What did, what did you do with that $600, Quan? That it was so memorable. You can't, you, can't, you can't even feed the whole congregation with $600. You can't feed the whole church with $600. How many wings you get with, how many lemon pepper wings you get with $600? 300, maybe? Sister Bessie is eating half of those. Sister Bessie is eating half of those lemon pepper wings, Quan. I tried to tell him I said Kamala Harris is going for a middle class tax cut. That means you wouldn't have to pay as much in taxes. He said, wait, which years do we have to pay taxes again? Is it the on year or the off year? I said, what? He said, you don't gotta pay taxes every year, do you? I really thought about it. I was like, damn, he's too far gone. <laughs> But if that don't work, we moving on. You gotta know when to hold them, know when to fold them, know when to walk away, because you're a c Sincere thanks to everybody who's reached out to me and submitted suggestions for videos, keep them coming. Uh, I take submissions for ideas for a video, suggestions for Racist of the Week. If you have something that just troubles you or you just wanna send me a note because I love getting those notes. Go ahead and shoot me an email at reese at reesewaters.com. I also have a newsletter that I send out periodically, so you'll be receiving that as well. You can also sign up on my website, reesewaters.com. Mm -hmm.